It's November 1999, this day. Good evening, this is Gina Martin, and you are watching BBC News Report. BBC headline. In Europe, during World War I period, 10 million soldiers lost their lives and got wounded. The First World War lasted four years and claimed the lives of some 10 million soldiers. But the British did make some limited gains that day, but not as much as the French did on their part of the battlefield and at a much higher cost. July 1st, 1916 was Britain's deadliest day not just in the First World War, but in all of British military history. 19,240 men were killed and about 38,000 wounded. And had its worst day of the war on July 1st as well, losing 85% of its men killed or wounded. The Australians suffered their most intense losses on July 19th, 1916, at Fromel, with 2,000 dead from a single division. For Canada, it was the 2,400 dead at Vimy Ridge on April 9th, 1917. The very first day, the Germans lost about 11,000 men killed in action, most of them well-trained infantry who could not be replaced. German officer Ernst Junger remembered a close call. For some of the other belligerent states, the totals are harder to estimate due to poor record-keeping or lost archives. For Italy, one contender for the bloodiest day might be the first day of the Battle of Caporetto on October 24, 1917, when Austro-Hungarian and German troops smashed through the Italian army. Or it might have been June 29, 1916, when the Austro-Hungarians launched a phosgene gas attack on Monte San Michele, which killed nearly 3,000 Italians and poisoned 4,000 others, along with some of the Austro-Hungarians themselves. In the end, that attack did not significantly change the front lines in that area. In the dead of winter. On that day alone, the Austro-Hungarian second and third armies reported 40,000 missing, many of whom had been killed in the fighting or died of hypothermia in the snow. A third possibility would be June 4, 1916, when the Russians began the Brusilov. Russian casualty records are also in a state that makes it hard to reconstruct accurate figures. It is possible, though, that the Russian army suffered its worst day during the 1915 gorlice tarnov offensive, when the combined armies of the Central Powers pushed the Russian army out of Poland and inflicted hundreds of thousands of losses. 1915, the bloodiest year of the war for France. In those two campaigns, they lost 81,000 wounded and 63,000 killed or missing. And most of the missing were... Well, let's go live to Europe to speak to our correspondent there. I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to a Great War special episode about the role of women in the First World War. They served as nurses, munitions factory workers, they sewed bandages, they sold war bonds, they worked in shipyards, they were spies, and much more. In Britain, the Women's Royal Air Force was created with women working as airplane mechanics. As you may imagine, the traditional family structure was very often completely changed by the war, as many women were forced into the workplace by the deaths of their husbands. Other women were drafted into industry. If we look at Britain for a minute, we see that during the war, 200,000 women took up posts in government departments, half a million in private clerical positions, and another quarter of a million in agriculture. This pales in comparison to the 700 thousand women who worked in the munitions industry, which, let's be clear, was dangerous work. There were five million women working in Britain by January 1918. Actually, in Britain during the war, roughly two million women replaced men at their jobs. And just Russia, the percentage of women in the workforce jumped from a quarter to 43%. A million women joined the workforce in Austria. And in France, where women were already a relatively large proportion of the workforce, female employment jumped 20%. Germany, though, saw fewer women join the workplace than other belligerents, largely due to pressure from trade unions. This meant that all female labor in Germany had to come from volunteers, and it has been suggested that one contributing factor to Germany's loss in the war was their failure to maximize their potential workforce by ignoring women, although they did force women in occupied areas into manual labor. Now, when women employed in munitions factories, the munitionettes you probably picture first. And indeed, they are the most visible faces of women workers from the First World War. Munitionettes produced 80% of the weapons and shells used by the British Army, and daily risked their lives working with poisonous substances without adequate protective clothing or proper safety measures. 
and after 1918 were quite different, with many women now having shorter hair and wearing shorter skirts or even trousers. Nursing, the munitions work, and of course the struggle for suffrage, to really put it all together and paint the big picture with the detail that it deserves, since the role of women in the war is underappreciated. Serving and working and dying in dangerous conditions often without any acknowledgement, turning their lives inside out and becoming breadwinners in their own right, and of course, grieving for the millions of lost husbands, fathers, and sons. The attitudes of people changed as a result of the World War. Why there was a need for peace, why Germany dem almost demanded that there had to be peace. The World War One began in 1914, ended in 1918, and it had cost the lives of millions. Okay, at the time it was the worst conflict in human history. This is BBC News with Gina Martin. For more stories, stay tuned until then. Goodbye for now.